Well, for some analysis on this, we're now joined by Professor John Stremelow, who's the Honorary Professor of International Relations at the University of the Witwatersrand. Uh, Professor, always good to talk to you. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Peter. So uh, getting to this point where we get to a deadline, government is about to shut down, it's starting to sound like a scratched record. I'm sure we've had a lot of conversations about the same issue. Why does America keep coming to this point? You raise a very important uh, subject that we could talk about for hours, Peter, but I think the wonder underlying point to be made is that African countries increasingly seem to be committed however difficult to pursue democracy. And the United States is often seen to be lecturing others about how democracy should work. If, if Xi Jinping in China and other autocrats wanted a good reason to discourage African countries from pursuing democracy, then you could cite the United States right now, which is paralyzed by polarization by two parties that are, are struggling along, one along ethnic lines, the Republicans, that is a minority increasingly, a white minority dominated party, and then the diversity of the Democratic Party, which looks a lot more like South Africa, frankly. Now, the South Africans looked at the American system when they concluded how best to structure the Constitution here and they avoided a lot of the mistakes that America's made. But that's a lot bigger question than the budget right now. What you've got right now is a continuing resolution only until December 3rd. They still have not had any agreement on lifting the debt ceiling, which is essential if you're going to uh, continue to fund the programs that, you are, um, that Nancy Pelosi was referring to, uh, the vital needs that are immediate. But then you've got looming in the background these two large uh, uh, bills that um, you, you've heard a lot about in the press, the infrastructure bill and then the, uh, really the, the, the uh, humanitarian family bills and employment bills and environmental bills that Joe Biden is pushing and the Republicans are, are just stonewalling because the, the government's very narrowly divided, Peter. So that uh, this notion that the U.S. can dominate the world is a little bit misplaced, I think. So it is a um, battle between political parties. Um, is there no consideration of what's best for the American people? Is that not anything that comes up in this equation? Well, it comes up all the time. It's highly contested. It's just that they have different views. Um, you remember President Mbeki talked about uh, South Africa as two nations, one black and one white. Well, in a, in a strange, funny way, historically, America is finally coming to terms with its legacy of division, um, that you've got uh, a federal system that overrepresents the rural, predominantly white, Christian, more conservative, who are losing status, and then the big urban states like California and New York. Um, they are completely mismatched within the U.S. governing structures. The Senate and the, and the House of Representatives is population-based, but um, the Republicans cannot win a national election, but they can continue to control. It's a kind of state capture, Peter. Um, it's a complicated issue, and I'm trying to be simplified mm -hmm. about it, but only to say that it's a subject that I think South Africans would, would be sensible to keep an eye, and Africans generally, an, an eye on because of an awful lot of uh, black Americans and a lot of recent immigrants from Africa in America. And uh, Africa has a stake in whether or not the American political system can function responsibly. And right now it isn't, but it could if the next year's congressional elections favor the Democrats and if the Biden can, can, can get a second term and, and continue to consolidate. It's a lot like the debate we're having here right now about governance issues. Democracies are fraught with these problems all the time, but the United States is in a critical moment right now, critical moment. But it sounds like conversations that we've had before. This is why, why I started with that. I remember Barack Obama having these issues, trying 
to make sure that uh, uh, you know uh, government employees get paid and that there wasn't going to be a shutdown. Um, and it, it boggles the mind because at the 11th hour, they always come to an agreement. So it starts to feel a bit more like gamesmanship than a real threat that government could shut down. Peter, you're right. Um, I go back to, to uh, the Vietnam period, the Richard Nixon period, the, the, the Reagan period. Remember, Reagan wanted to slash and get government out of people's way. Bill Clinton had a crisis on his hands. Yes, it's been repetitive. But you know, you, um, you, you can be a negative optimist and think you can go up to the edge of the cliff and always know how to pull back. Sometimes you go over the cliff, Peter. Mm. Mm. And uh, I think in, in my lifetime, I've never seen the United States so precariously balanced. We used to say that the U.S. was narrowly divided but not deeply divided. That's because they hadn't confronted their, their very um, mixed history and their um, structural deficits in their democratic system. If, if you have a democracy that's supposed to be government by the people, for the people, um, then uh, you, you cannot have the Democrats winning national elections and the Republicans continuing to control the federal government. Uh, and that's what's been happening in the last few years. That's come to a head. And it's going to be the next uh, two or three years, I think, which we will need to see a tipping point one way or the other. I, I don't want to be overly dramatic, Peter, but I think you're right to say that you've heard all this before, but sometimes it's a little different. And I think mm -hmm. this time it really is different. Um, it'll be very interesting to see whether or not they get a budget agreement by the 18th of October. I think they'll, they'll, they'll not a budget agreement, but at least a, a, a debt ceiling lifting agreement. And, and that's part of the budget process. But then you've got to have to get these bills passed that uh, are, are necessary to take the, over, over the, 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 the setbacks of COVID and are necessary to deal with the increasing and terrible inequities in American society. And, and you've got to pass this big bill that uh, Biden wants to do for child care and for, for uh, employment possibilities in order to keep stability in the democracy, Peter. Mm. Except for a thin layer of wealthy people, who would vote for a party that wants to make sure that this debt ceiling doesn't get passed and that uh, the social spending that's required doesn't happen? Uh, uh, Peter, you, you ask another good, good question. And what the Republicans have concocted, and you see this in the uh, willingness to vote for, for Donald Trump in 2020, uh, 70 million Americans voted for him. But in fact, within the Republican Party during the primaries, Trump was lucky if he could get 20% of the vote, which was enough to get through that system, that peculiar system that Americans have, uh, first past the post for primaries and then on to an election. But what Trump was able to do and what the Republicans have fallen back on and why 70% say that Joe Biden was not uh, duly elected is that the Republicans represent the, uh, the, 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 the falling status of white American, rural Americans, Americans that have this mythology of the nation that I was raised with as an urban East Coast American because we all took it for granted, because the country was growing and the country was prosperous in the world, but it wasn't deeply divided because it had ignored the legacies of its, its racism, its, 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 its segregation. And it now is coming to pass that America is becoming a multinational country. It is no longer going to be dominated by, by the elite that ran it from the founding, you know, 230 years ago. It's evolved a lot. Biden, Biden is a reflection of the new, new it's ironic because Obama's election in, um, in, in getting a black man in the White House sent shockwaves through the Republican constituency that Trump was able to ride to victory in 2016 and that he played up to so heavily in this last election. And until, it come, until Americans come to grips with that problem, 
Um, and, and they're close to doing so. I think I'm still hopeful, but it's very precarious. It's just very precarious mm -hmm. right now. Um, they've ignored these problems for years and years and years and years, and now it's coming because the country is going to be a majority minority country um, uh, in, in the next 20 years. The, the demographics are just there now. All right. Um, so, so, but so, anyway, that's, that's more than the budget. You know, you called about the budget, yeah. and the budget will be uh, continuing for a while, but it's going to have to uh, be settled by the middle of October. All right. So we'll be back here again in a couple of, uh, in a few weeks, actually. So uh, people might be wondering, how is it that the wealthiest country in the world is in so much debt that you have a budget deficit the size of trillions where it's way beyond uh, the country's GDP and this is allowed to happen? No, the, 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 the economics of this is, are, are a little more complicated because the US has been uh, considered to be the banker for the world and so it can print money, it can, as long as it's continuing to grow and as long as it honors its bills, um, there have been 80, approximately 80 efforts at raising the debt ceiling. They've all been bipartisan three times during the Trump administration. He was very conservative, but he wanted tax cuts. The, the politics of this are just god awful, Peter. And the politics have led to compromises that have increased the debt. But the debt's been manageable. It can't go on forever. We all know that. But it has been able to go on, and the country has been able to continue to grow, but it has not attended to its inequality that has been rising. And now it's got a very disenchanted and, and possibly violent, which we saw on January 6th, uh, minority that feels they're losing out. And, and it's ethnic nationalism. It's tribalism uh, in, in the African sense. It's ironic, Peter. and, and uh, and, and you're just seeing it now happen, but the the uh, but the, but the budget will will um, will will be managed if they can deal with the politics first, and if they can get uh, a stability and a and a support from the American people, which the Biden uh, three and a half trillion uh, plan for the um, uh, uh, lower classes and for the uh, for middle America and for the green you know climate change. Uh, efforts to 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 make the country more more credible and viable over the longer term. If it does that, it can probably get through this okay. But if it doesn't, you know, Obama had a financial crisis on his hands when he came to office, and he handled it. But this is much more worse now. And so we'll see in the next uh, couple of years. It's going to be very very dramatic and very important to watch. But in the meantime, in the short time, you just want to get this budget agreement yeah. done. In, um, in in by by October 18th, and then you've got to get these these bills passed or some variation of them to give people hope and give some stability to a country that's that's at war with itself. Professor John Stremler, always a pleasure talking to you. I have a feeling we'll be having an interesting conversation come October. <laughs> Thank you so much. Won't be cheery. <laughs> All right, that's the Professor John Strimler speaking to us about uh, the US. They've signed a temporary uh, scenario where the current funding uh, levels continue until the end of the year. Uh, the president is busy trying to raise the debt ceiling. In other words, they want to be able to spend above the current uh, debt ceiling and the uh, Republicans are just not having it. So we'll see how that one ends up. But it is a story we've seen before but Professor John Stromler seems to believe that uh, this is a little bit more serious this time around.